November 1988. Mr. Chairman, as desired by this House last time, I presented the supplementary demands. I thought it fit that I must take the House into confidence by presenting them in the middle of the year. So far as I am aware, this is the first time that a popular ministry has presented these demands in the middle of the year. The previous practice was that this was done at the end of March. But you will remember that this house wanted that the legislature should be taken into confidence on all items of expenditure and in accordance with it. I brought forward this statement. I am glad to find that the points made about many items justify the expenditure on these items. I have been bearing the speeches now and on the last occasion. Every member wanted me in particular to be the watchdog of the finances of the state. But I do not know whether I have discharged my duties to the satisfaction of the house or not. But I can say from the debate today that nobody has charged either me or the ministry with extra vacants. Charges have not been made of appointments being sanctioned which should not have been sanctioned or of keeping or creating departments which must have been scrapped. It is the greatest consolation to the ministry and to me. So, I believe that we have justified the expectations of the House in safeguarding the financial position of the state. But it is not a very pleasant duty for the Finance Minister to go into detail into every item that is brought forward before the government. Many urgent demands are made by various heads of departments. It is not good to scrutinize them in a very critical manner and finally say no to them. They are dealing with the departments and they know the urgency of the matter. Their subordinates have been pressing for them year after year. The secretary of the department comes up again and says that he wants it immediately. In these circumstances, it is rather difficult for the finance department and for the finance minister to say no. But I may say that we have the standing finance committee presided over by the Honorable the Chief Minister himself and every item even though it might have been sanctioned by the finance department and the minister is scrutinized again by the standing finance committee. We are aware of the financial difficulty of the state. We have been pressing on the government of India for finance for various items. We are also aware of their difficulties. While I congratulate myself that we are getting more money from all heads of revenue. The position is that we will be left with a deficit. The demands from the departments are really pressing. But where is the money to come from? We are trying to do our best to get some revenue from sales tax and entertainment tax which again will go to the local bodies. We want these items of money to finance our schemes. We are aware that if necessary some retrenchment will be possible. We have taken steps to set up a committee for this purpose. We are eagerly awaiting the recommendations of that committee. We are anxious to reduce expenditure. We want to spend money where it is urgently needed. But urgent necessities of life have become so numerous that it has become very difficult to say which is urgent and which is not. But I may tell the house that food and security are the most basic necessaries of life. Today, letter dated 3rd February 1980 from K. 
Krishna Book Agency, Gandhi Road, Bombay, to the General Book Publishers, Anna Salai Metras. Dear Sars, we would like to draw your kind attention to our letter of last month. We are sorry that we have not yet received any reply from you. We pointed out that we would be bringing out a catalog on the occasion of our next book exhibition which would be held next April. We requested you to favor us with an advertisement in that catalog. It is proposed to bring out the catalog in an attractive form so that it may catch the attention of the right people. We are glad to inform you that many publishers have already sent their advertisements for the catalog. We hope that you will also join them in the advertisement pages of the catalog so that your publications may be brought to the notice of a large number of people all over India. The catalog will be supplied to all the visitors to the book exhibition. In addition, we propose to send copies to important booksellers and libraries in India. We need not point out that this will cover a large number of customers throughout the country. So, we are sure you will realize that an advertisement in our catalog will bring your publications to the kind attention of the people concerned. We look forward to your response very soon. Your